Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing my final tutorial video for the Norvina Volume 3 from Anastasia Beverly Hills. If you missed out on my Volume 1 and Volume 2 video, I would recommend you check those out just to see those palettes and the kind of looks I created for those. But if you want to get some inspiration for this particular palette and just kind of hear my thoughts as I go along, then just continue watching. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because I've already said it twice before, so this is time number three. But this is the ABH Norvina Volume 3. This is obviously the third palette in the whole collection or whatever this whole release fiasco is. I don't really know, but it's the third palette. Volume 1 is more of a purpley pink palette. Volume 2 is a little bit more green and blue based and this one is a very interesting color scheme i would say it's like an orange warm based palette but we also have quite a lot of greens in here very interesting i don't i don't know but <laughs> anyways the packaging of this of course is the same i really like this packaging i love how big it is with all of these colors i think this one's the prettiest with the orange background and the gold butterflies flying on it i think it's the cutest this has a great giant mirror that's like very good don't look at that oh my goodness but it has a really great quality mirror in here and then you have like the most interesting color scheme if you ask me i think this one's going to be the most popular because it does have the most wearable shades in here but also you know there are so many shades you can create a lot of different looks with this one in particular i don't know this one is just like an interesting mix of colors but something about this palette is that it's swatched so pigmented and creamy uh, if you watched my volume 2 video you would know that those shades were a little bit iffy and patchy with their swatches not this one this one in volume 1 for some reason the swatches in here were just so strong and beautiful and I'm still collecting my thoughts on this one but this one might be my favorite I will for sure let you know at the end of this video which one my favorite is but like this one just has an interesting layout of colors and I think I just like that it has more colors that I'm more comfortable with but anyways let me shut up let's get into this look right here all right so for this first look I wanted to do a look that was pretty wearable very much in my own personal comfort zone so I know you can go a lot of different directions with this palette first shade I'm going into is b5 as you can see this is a great transition shade I don't know and just after those first two palettes which are just so comfortable it's just kind of refreshing to be able to just easily look at a palette and know that i'd be comfortable wearing it out obviously you can go kind of crazy with this palette but it's nice to have the option of also not having to go crazy so we're gonna deepen that up with d1 right here and just be aware with this particular shade it definitely comes off much more orange than it does in the pan. So this is what kind of created that very Thanksgiving-y kind of look if you ask me. But yeah, this palette is definitely more fall compared to the other two. So to deepen it up, I'm taking E5 right here. And this color, I feel like makes the look super Thanksgiving-y looking. But I'm not mad at it because Thanksgiving is going to come sooner than you know it. And we're going to kind of blend this everywhere and i just really like the contrast that the gold gives this reddish shade so i'm all about putting this shade everywhere and i'm gonna go in with that initial transition shade and kind of have some of that warmth pop through all right so we're going to take c1 i'm just going to apply that with my finger this particular shade you will find does not have as much of a pigmented base it's all about that shimmer and glimmer one thing that i love about this collection of palettes is i love this formula that they have in here where it's just super glittery but still like a shimmer shade it's not gonna fall all over your face and the way it reflects the light is just really pretty so this particular formula has been scattered throughout the three palettes and i'm just in love with it it's glitter without being over the top and without needing a glitter glue now if you were to add a glitter glue that would be insane and it would just really amplify the look but it doesn't even need it and that's how you know it's a good shadow. Now for a fun orangey pop, I'm taking some of D2. This shade is a touch more deep than that golden color, but it adds just like a fun orange pop. 
On a pencil brush, I'm taking some of E2 right here. I wanted to use a pencil brush, so I just really wanted to keep this color very concentrated. Normally, I do more of a blown out lower lash line. Today, I just felt like keeping that definition a little bit tighter to the eye. So this is basically it for the look. Once you see it and play with liner and lashes, you're gonna fall in love. So just wait, I'll be right back. All right, so with liner, lips, and lashes, this is what we're working with. I've definitely created this look on my channel multiple times, but I just, I was feeling like fall and Thanksgiving, and I just wanted to show you that you can create a look that's like this pretty simple using this palette. You could even go more neutral, but I couldn't help myself. I had to lean super duper warm but every color in here worked beautifully as expected these norvina palettes have such an amazing formula it's crazy so now let's move on to a different look using a whole different color scheme from this palette so for this next look i wanted to do something a little bit more pinky purpley because there are some purpley tones and you guys know how i feel about purples for the transition color we're going into a3 i very lightly tapped that on my brush i am very very softly working that into my crease just to get a color to soften the edges out when we put actual like bright colors down but this color is a great transition shade it has a little bit of yellow to it and it's really pretty and this would be really good for more like neutral wearable looks as well so i wanted to play around with this hot pink right here because it was calling my name this is B3 and I'm going to pat this into the inner half of my crease kind of blend that up This can really pack brightly if you would like to build it up or you can keep it a little bit more soft as well So I really like this color. I was expecting a little bit more from it because there's some other colors from ABH that are like this one's pretty good and it is pretty customizable, which is nice. So the next shade I'm taking is B4 right here, which is that purpley violet shade. I have to say the only thing that I don't love is I feel like that hot pink we just put down, B3, it blends out to be pretty close to B4, which is this purple. So as you can see, they are like slightly different but it's not that easy to tell them apart so just be aware of that i mean it's nothing like a deal breaker by any means but it is something i did notice because i was expecting that hot pink shade to be much more vibrant and while i'm at it i'm gonna take those two shades and kind of work them along my lower lash line so we're already working at it for those of you who like just don't have a lot of brushes i literally am taking this big fat blending brush and running it along my lower lash line because i'm too lazy to dig out for one of my smaller brushes so the next shade we're taking is c4 right here this is such an interesting shade because it can be used in like reddish looks because it's a little bit cranberry but it also can be used in purple looks because it also is like a little bit more plummy. I do wish it did add just a little bit more dimension, but it still is that nice deepening shade and we're definitely going to go back to that color. So I'm not going to talk while doing this, but I'm taking the ABH eye primer and my ABH brush right here and I'm going to quietly do a cut crease to the best of my ability. So this shade was the one that was calling out to me the most. So I'm going to put that right on the inner part of my eyelid where I have the concealer down. Now this shade I was a touch disappointed by because the shimmers in these three big palettes are super amazing. And this one kind of falls flat compared to the rest of them. But it is still really nice. I feel like I'm talking so negatively about all of the shades I used today for some reason. They're not bad, but... All of them there's just something that's not perfect so even if I have something negative to say that doesn't mean they're not good it just means I feel like it could be bad so I am slightly wetting my brush as well to see if I can get a little bit of pizzazz from this purple shade because I really want it to stand out and it does help to wet it by the way it really does and I'm gonna take some of C4 which is that dark 
deepening shade and I'm just gonna reapply it to the edge here because I'm not looking to have a sharp edge on the edge. Did that make sense? On the outer edge of my eye. For my inner corner highlight, we went out of the ABH range and I'm playing with these new Kaleidos highlighters. They're super awesome, you guys. So I'm taking Comet Catcher right here and I'm gonna apply that to my inner corner. And this one is super pinky. I think if you have a medium skin tone or a a deep skin tone oh my god this is gonna look incredible on your skin but just to lighten and brighten that up i'm taking star surfer which is a bit brighter it's more crystally do you guys see that oh my goodness and by the way i mix those two on my cheeks so that's what that highlight is so i'm going to uh, finish the rest of my face do some liner and lashes and i will be back to show you the final look all right so here is the final look that i just showed you i know it's like a lot going on. I'm not used to wearing lashes these big. I normally don't. Or hoops. <laughs> and I'm wearing uh, the sweatshirt I wore to work today. So there's that as well. But yes, I did play with more of the purple tones in this palette. I think it's really pretty. I think the quality of the these shadows were quite decent. None of them were bad at all. They were pretty good. And yeah, I really like this look. This is very up my alley color story-wise. So I'm going to lead you into my last and final look using a different group of colors from this palette. So if you hear like rain or stuff going on in the background, it's because it's like a really bad storm outside. So sorry in advance. The first color I'm starting off with is C2, which is a reddish shade. This is totally a very risky place to put a red eyeshadow because they seriously risk making you look sick. I really wanted the red to start off the gradient for some reason today. I just have never done it before. And you definitely are going to have to go back and reapply to make the shades more bold. So this is just kind of laying down that initial blend. The red's going to bleed into orange, so I'm taking some of A2. Going to blend. Oh my gosh, it's raining so hard outside right now. So next we need a yellow shade, so I'm taking some of E4. This shade is a little bit more soft, so it does require a touch of building. Next we will be taking some of D3, which is a green shade. This look is actually very, very easy, and this particular green shade is the perfect yellow to green color. We're gonna use some of B2 right here, which is like a very blue teal green. This is going to start adding some depth, and I just think it's a really great blending shade. To add the final layer of depth, I'm digging into E1. Okay, and then before I go on to the lid color, I'm going to very quickly kind of deepen up the shades once more. The next shade we are going into is B1 right here, and I'm applying that all over the lid. This shade blends surprisingly well, even into the red tone. So, I actually quite enjoy this shade all over the lid for this look. I'm noticing I blended this side out way more than this side, so let's make them a little bit more even. So at this point now, I'm going to finish the rest of my face, and then I'll be back to work on the lower lash line. I'm a total dummy, and I completely forgot to show you how I did my lower lash line. So what I've done, I've taken A4 and put that all over the lower lash line. Then I've blended in some of D3 on the outer half put B2 right on top of that outer half, and now I'm taking E1, and this is going to blend into that definition right here. Pretty simple. And now I did it on this eye, but I'm taking some of C1 right here, and I'm gonna put that right in the inner corner. Now, this is gonna stop that red bit from looking weird and like you have an eye infection. Make sure you wear a gold highlight to complement your inner corner color. All right, cool. So I'm gonna put liner, lashes, and all of that good stuff on, and we will be back to reveal the final look. All right, so this is the final look. No jewelry or anything because 
I'm about to go to bed. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> um, but here is the final look. And I wanted to do this look mainly because I wanted to do three very different looks with this palette because I feel like this palette in particular in the collection is one of the most versatile. I mean, you can see in my three looks, they're complete opposites. And honestly, I could really keep going with this palette with the looks. This palette leaves me feeling so inspired. And I really love this look. I wanted to get a really fun rainbow one in for you guys. So overall, my thoughts about this palette is that it is wonderful. Of course, I'm just really loving this collection. I think you can get some really neat, unique looks with this palette. And this is a palette, surprisingly, you can create like a rainbow look with this palette. And it definitely runs more warm, but there is a great mix of colors in here. I wouldn't say this is my favorite though. Of the three, volume one is still my favorite, but this one is definitely my second favorite and it's very good. It's not too far off from volume one. I think this one, honestly, is going to be most people's favorite though so I would recommend picking up at least one of these guys pick the color scheme that fits your lifestyle better if you like pinks and purple like me that's why I like volume one but if you are more of a neutral wearer but you want to explore more I think volume three is a great one for you so that's all I have for today's video I finally completed a video for each palette in the Norvina collection except for the mini ones that just came out I'm not picking those up but as far as the big ones go this is the last one if you haven't checked out the other videos for the other palettes I definitely recommend that you do I will link them down I will link them down below for you guys and if you aren't subscribed to my channel already do it <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one